Dear Boomers, I'm revisiting the topic today of ageism-induced self-loathing. Ageism is part of the isms in our society, and there's so many of them. There are good isms, but we're going to talk about the negative isms, such as racism, classism, sexism, ageism, heterosexualism, and racism, to name just a few. And these isms, among other things, create toxic environments. If you're in the workplace and there's a lot of ageism or sexism or just toxic relationships, people are not trained to effectively communicate with each other, that is called a toxic work environment. So I wanted to talk about um, how the reason ageism and self loathing go together is because the elderly are invisible in American society and that invisibility can create a problem with self-esteem as we can have talked about in another video and um, there are so many things that we can think about that in terms of ageism in media in healthcare or the workplace as we just described ageism in the commercials that we watch on television you know basically people don't feel like they are good enough that to especially in comparison to the celebrity culture there is a, an overemphasis in America to celebrities everybody really talks a lot about celebrities talks about the clothing that they wear talks about whether they look good for their age or boy that person is really aged badly and people do that to each other as well so I wanted to say that um, I wrote I did a video the other day and wrote a blog post about the 13 different ways that we can survive all of these outer world problems in perception we have to have a way of loving ourselves basically um, so the first thing is understanding impermanence that nothing is permanent except for the realities of the universal principles of love that is permanent but most everything else is impermanent and because most people try to manipulate their futures and their past they don't realize that everything changes. Even if you are sad or depressed, that is impermanent. If you, you know, go out into the beautiful spring that we're having, the beautiful green, the, the light green, the trees are blooming, that is impermanent. Soon it will be summer and soon it will be winter and those leaves will fall in the autumn, of course. And then we have some barren times. But if you look closely at the trees during the winter months, there is something that shows us that the leaves are getting ready to come back it's I love it it's so interesting so we have to cultivate mindfulness and when we cultivate mindfulness we are that's living in the present moment is not the easiest thing to do because often even when you are attempting to live in the now your mind wanders to what you should be doing in the future you you keep um, thinking about not in the moment you're not in the moment even with the breath the breath will help us live in the moment the breath is very important for connecting us to the timeless element of life however there's that little piece of the mind that's going forward and worried a little worry about things that maybe there's a relationship problem or maybe there's a problem with money or maybe there's a problem with something that somebody said and that weighs on you but that is not living in the present moment you have to free yourself of the the tendency and almost the addiction to thinking about these troubling little things that can crawl into your space into your mind it's like a mo it's like a brain worm basically and the art of letting go oh my gosh that is so so beautiful let go let god letting go um it can be it's it's an art 
So when you have these little thoughts that come in that destroy your peace of mind, you learn the art of letting go, purposely letting go. It's a beautiful thing. And spend as much time in silence. Silence, silence is golden. Silence is what rejuvenates us to go on with our projects, the things that we love to do, the things that we, uh, we do for our legacy in this world. Compassion and kindness always. That's always a given. We need to have compassion and love and kindness, unconditional love and forgiveness. We have to work on forgiveness. As we go forward, we know that we're not going to be here forever. It's very important to think about how the, the unforgiving mind is also a clinging mind. Is also is when you are trying to live and when you are attempting to live in the present moment, the unforgiving qualities of things that you are hanging on to do not allow you to live in the present moment. They're, they're haunting you, holding grievances. And also they are uh, mindsets that are very low frequency mindsets. So if you just work on elevating your emotions and your attitudes, that will help in letting go of grievances. It will help you to forgive. Now, we all know that forgiveness is like peeling away an onion. There are things that all of a sudden will crop up that you that realize you're hanging on to an, an unforgiving mind and you're, uh, an, an unforgiving memory. So compassion and kindness lead into accepting what is. Well, if you're having feelings of unforgiveness, it's probably best to accept it. Accept it and then it transforms. We don't really want these emotions to hang on to our psyche. So we accept the things that we cannot change. And the things that we can change would be a, a, a constant awareness of how we think and how we feel and how we are willing to wake up every morning or whatever time you wake up, wake up with a sense of love for life. That is the gratitude that is inherent. The gratitude that Joe Dispenza talks about has to do with if you're not happy with your life, you create a new world and you create a new life by the breath, by energizing the heart, bringing the breath into the heart and bringing the breath throughout the body. And, and when you energize the heart, it's a magnetic force that goes to the brain and creates serotonin and oxytocin and, rela and the, there's a, a coherence between the heart and the brain that makes life a lot easier to live. And, but when you are doing these coherent heart brain exercises, you are in essence creating a new self. You are not the same person. When you continuously work on the heart and the brain, you become a new person. You get up out of your meditation chair, a new person. And when you do get up out of the meditation chair or cushion, and you realize that your mind is racing against time, you have so much to do and so little time to do it, then you better get back on the cushion. And we, we do want to get up as a new people, loving, forgiving, and joyously living every moment, in the moment, in the moment with each breath. So not attachment to outcome. I think that was a principle that was highlighted in the spiritual chastise of the Bhagavad Gita and how Krishna told Arjuna that the way to happiness was to have no attachment to outcome whatsoever. Because when you have attachment to outcome, you are manipulating your life, you're miserable really, and you enjoy the process of what it is you are working on. You enjoy the process, it's a beautiful thing. Joy in simple things, that is something that we people who are 
getting older, we have the time to enjoy the simple things if we're not working anymore. And we can enjoy and savor the cup of a cup, fresh cup of coffee or tea. We savor the, the smells, the warm cup of her hands are a little chilly, the taste, every taste. And that's how we can mindfully eat as well. Every taste, every beautiful bite of food has come from the farmers who have prepared the, f the opportunity for us to eat. And also, we can grow our own food. It's very important. Uh, gardening is a very healthy thing to do. It, it helps with uh, flexibility, and it's really wonderful to be outside. It's wonderful to dig in the dirt and watch the dig up worms because the worms are very wonderful in the earth. And so the joy in simple things, you have to kind of relinquish a hold on time. Relinquish a hold on time. And that is what um, the, appreci <clears throat> the appreciation of simple things are all about. Because you really want to get into that beautiful flow of timelessness. When you're worried about time, you, you're you know, racing against time, you can't get into that flow that is so creative, creative. We want to foster the creative mind and the way to do that is to really live in the present moment without that fear of all the things you have to do and living in that joyous realm of the simple things of life relinquishes your hold on time. Time does not exist. So linear time does not exist. But that flow time is what actually gets us in touch with the eternal. And of course, the role of intuition. We, um, we, if we trust our intuition, we are less liable to overthink everything, analyze, overthink, analyze, overthink. And when we we let our intuition, I mean, you, you have to do research for the, th the things that we are doing here online. Content creation does require research, but in the end, you move on and you cr do the content creation. You create the content instead of going like, oh my God, I really don't know what I'm doing and, and this doesn't sound right. And, and then you just basically days later haven't done what you set out to do to originally. And we talked about embracing so solitude does go hand in hand with the power of silence. The power of silence and solitude. However, I must say that there's not a whole lot of silence here. I live near a road and there's a lot of sirens going by, but that gives me the opportunity to pray for the people they're going to pick up. Mostly a lot of these sirens are going to pick up people who had heart attacks. We can pray for them. And that reminds me that that really works. Let me tell you what happened. Carolyn Mace talked about a situation where there was a car accident and a woman who was responsible for the first car accident and then there was a pile up. The people started to think about everybody who was involved in that accident and praying for the woman because the sirens were coming to make sure to take her to the hospital. And apparently what happened was she had an out-of-body experience and she noticed the people who were praying for her and who were sending goodwill to her eventual uh, recovery from what happened to her in the accident. She saw that and she took down the license plate of one person who was very intensely praying for her. And when she got out of the hospital, she traced the license number to that person and came to the door and thanked them. So my point is, is don't, don't ever think that prayer does not work. 
meditation is you talking to God and prayer is God talking to you. And mindful eating and cultivating mindfulness and all of these things help us to take these solitude practices off the meditation cushion onto everyday life. We go out into the world in a meditative state. We are sensitive, more sensitive to everything we, we, we are. If, if you start working with your heart, you become more sensitive. Your intuition becomes stronger. You become sensitive to the pain and the joy of other people. You, you tune into the animals on your daily walks, the dogs. You, you become more sensitive to the dogs that live with you and, and the way that they communicate with you. That unconditional love of your dog is unequaled, really. It is unequal. And as we do all of these things, we naturally do reduce the ego. We no longer are always thinking about ourselves, which is a very narrow focus. We do things for other people because we want to serve humanity. Humanism is another ism, and that's a good ism. There are a lot of good isms, but ageism is something that we can work on within our society. My book tomorrow, the book uh, calling, called Breaking the Age Code by Dr. Levy is coming tomorrow. And I will, I have reached out to her to get her to come on my YouTube channel. However, that did not work. <laughs> so I must think of another way. And finally, living in the present moment. Be here now, now, now. Ram Dass came out with that book back in the probably the early 70s or so and Be Here Now became a kind of Bible to my generation. His guru in India also said love everybody which was more difficult for people to do but finally it became apparent that that's the only thing to do is to love everybody. So I just discussed how the strategies that we need to do to combat internalized ageism. And we can, I think if you are influenced by what people say about us as aged, aging people, that's the problem. You know, you care too much about what other people think and that's not going to get us anywhere at all. So, I would like to have you please re, please subscribe to my channel and like and click on the notification thing because I do come on every day. So that's a little different take on the ageism induced self-loathing. We don't have to hate anybody including ourselves. Okay? Love you all. Bye.